Many ancient cultures once believed that the world rested on the back of a giant sea turtle. This idea might seem far-fetched today, but for a diverse range of marine organisms, it's reality. Collectively known as epibionts, these organisms make their homes on the backs of marine animals such as crabs, whales and sea turtles. These epibionts range in size, from microscopic plants called diatoms that are just a few hundredths of a millimeter across to fish called remoras that can grow to lengths of 75 centimeters. As scientists, we are finally starting to unlock the secrets of these mysterious hitchhikers, as we fill in the knowledge gaps about how sea turtle epibionts vary globally, we hope to figure out if and why different sea turtles from different geographic areas host different epibiont communities. Furthermore, it's becoming clear that the creatures found on each sea turtle can tell a story about where that turtle has been and what it was doing there. The information encoded in each sea turtle's unique set of hitchhikers can, in turn, help guide management decisions to protect these animals during their lives at sea. Who are these hitchhikers? Sea turtles spend almost their entire lives in the water, this is where they feed, breed, and sleep. But every few years, adult sea turtles migrate from their feeding areas to sandy tropical beaches where they lay their eggs. These migrations are among the longest in the animal kingdom, and sea turtles can cross entire ocean basins just to reach their preferred nesting beaches. Luckily for us, when sea turtles emerge onto land to nest we have a unique opportunity to work with these animals up close. Implications for fisheries management, the largest threat sea turtles currently face worldwide is ending up as bycatch. Every year, hundreds of thousands of sea turtles are incidentally caught on hooks or entangled in nets intended to catch commercially harvested fish species, the information we get from sea turtles epibionts could help alleviate this problem. With better knowledge of sea turtle movements based on their epibionts, we can start to fish in a more informed way. We can design strategies to avoid sea turtle hotspots. While ensuring that fisheries are still able to catch their desired commercially harvested species, and of course, any efforts to protect sea turtles will also directly benefit their epibiont hitchhikers. Indeed, an epibiont's fate is inescapably tied to that of its sea turtle host. This is of particular concern in certain sea turtle populations, such as the East Pacific leatherback turtle, which has declined by 98% in less than three decades. As this population teeters on the brink of extinction, so do many of its epibionts, epibionts, and sea turtles have coexisted for millennia. While it could be said that these epibionts have just been along for the ride, it now seems they could play a crucial role in designing conservation management plans for sea turtles. Far from being passive bystanders in their own decline, these epibionts could be the sea turtle saviors if we use just a little human ingenuity.